Oh, full house. Damn. The guy. What's going on? What up? What's up with it? What's going on? What's going on? Not much. How y'all brothers doing? Good. Okay, hey, man. Rocking the we bitch. We live HBCU, you know. HBCU, <laughs> Boo State, University. I see you. I see you, MC. <laughs> I'm like, okay, we got another school dog in here. Yeah, yeah. Ain't no, about? big boy dogs are good at what you're talking about. Hey, 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 boo, hey, man. Hey, 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 hey. Relax. 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 You know what it is. It, it, hey, the oldest man. HBC you in Maryland, you hear me? The first. The first. You know, y'all the first in Maryland. We the first. I'm the first in Mississippi. Yeah, Jordan, what y'all is. I've been with y'all. It's, it's, it's not a first right here. We, we got the same. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to drink my water on y'all, man. Hey, hey. You know what, Jordan? You alpha, so you can't say you first, brother. So you know how to. Oh, you got a brother right here? Oh, we got a star. Oh, my good brother. My apologies, What's brother. Up, brother? I, I guess you, you cool. You cool now. <laughs> <laughs> we good. We good. My bad. I ain't know. I ain't, I ain't know. We good. We good. Now. What's yeah, going man. on? What's going on, everybody? All right, so let's get into the business. What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Joshua Wright, here live on historically black sense welcome to the hbcu man cave episode three today we will be talking about body image and self-esteem for men today i have with me three distinguished gentlemen please introduce yourselves mc since you're the new person start off yeah absolutely the newbie gotta go first um what's popping y'all it's good to be back you know here with historically black sense um my name is Bajon cradle everybody calls me mc Senior communications major for PG County, Maryland, right here at the illustrious Blue State University. Um, I do a lot. I host, I MC, I'm an alpha, I'm in charge of radio station. You now, I me, mean? I basically do a lot under the umbrella, so feel good to be home. Most definitely, most definitely. All right, let's go. Continue with Bowie State. Up y'all in the building. Hey, man, listen, man, this is this OG Daniel, man. I'm, OG? I'm the OG of the crew. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, a, uh, I'm a senior at Bowie State University right now, graduating in the fall in criminal justice, head to law school next year at University of Baltimore. Uh, I'm a father of two, married 19 years. Um, I've, I retired from the Air Force after 24 years. And I'm, I'm and this is my second life, man. And I also do, uh, I'm, I'm a professional stand-up comedian as well. So y'all oh, check us out, man. It's a lot going on. You know, we have a lot of great conversations. And I feel like I'm one of the crew with the young guys. You know what I'm saying? I feel like, <laughs> I, I feel like the cool uncle. You know what I'm saying? Everybody needs OG. OG. Everybody needs OG. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Come on, Joe. <laughs> uh, He's waiting on the introduction for the introduction. Yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, man. I was like, man, we're Josh. At? It's all right. Uh, I'm. Jordan Jefferson. I'm from Jackson, Mississippi. I'm in Bowie Land. I'm living in D.C. Um, in Northwest 9th Street. <laughs> um, I'm excited to be here. I'm expanding on a new journey in my life, living in D.C. and trying to get new experiences with public-private partnerships and all that type of stuff. Um, I played football at Jackson State University. I'm an alpha man as well. Student body president. Love to talk about politics, do op-eds on the side. Uh, try to do a jack of all trades. So I'm happy to be here again and thank y'all for sure. the opportunity. All right, all right, all right. Again, I am Joshua Wright, an alumni, class of 2023, graduate of Rust College, the first ever HBCU in Mississippi. I am currently a graduate student at Murray State University in Kentucky. And I'm, hey, I'm here. I'm a jack of all trades. I do videos, I'm a musician. Hey, I do it all. But welcome again to the HBCU Man Cave right here on Historically Black Sense. It is a new weekly series dedicated to men. And we just want to talk about today in episode three, body image and self-esteem for men. So brothers, I do have first question coming out. How do you define self-esteem and how do you think it relates to body image? I'll go. Uh, I think that when it comes to self-esteem, it's really about, you look at the root world, the root word self, right? The confidence that one has in themselves, their, their ability to think and speak and feel highly of themselves. And I think when it comes to body image, and especially it doesn't get talked about enough because you know, men because we're taught to be tough and not care about those certain things, but men can be self-conscious about their body image too, whether they feel too tall or too fat, too short or too skinny, like 
men can have those kind of self-conscious thoughts about themselves too. And I think that's why it's great that we have this because it doesn't get talked about enough. But yeah, they say when you look good, you feel good. And sometimes even if men, they don't feel like they look up to part to society or women's standards or women's standards, they now start to affect their thinking. Most definitely, most definitely. I, I will compare this. To, so we got body image and, and like this name image, image and likeness. So NIL with this, with, with men. So I want to kind of compare the two of like owning up and using your platform for self likeness and image. Um, I really, that's why I really thought of like when I saw this, I was like, NIL. So really just, man, taking advantage of yourself, you know, eating well, having good energy, exfoliating, you know, just putting yourself in a good grasp of the world. And I see a lot of times as like, as being a man, a lot of times we're sloppy, man. We don't brush our hair. You know, some people don't even brush their teeth sometimes. But, you know, just trying to promote that, you know, you can, it's simple things that can really make yourself feel good and the world approach you even better that can um, make it better for you. Little things like a little cologne, getting your hair cut off, wearing a suit. A lot of black men, I feel like a lot of, enough of us don't even own a suit. Just one black suit, wear it one, once a month. You know, just doing little, little things that make you not, to the outer world, not look like a, a problem to society. So I kind of want to expand on that later in the conversation of how we can present ourselves to not look as much of a, a, as of a threat sometimes. And sometimes we, we got to have those conversations with our, our black boys a lot of about just how you handle the police, you know, like just, just certain things and maneuvers of communication and body language will make sure you stay on this word a little longer. Most definitely, most definitely. Yeah. Hold on, I sir, agree. You, I'll go ahead, for sure. Sure. Before you answer that question, our producer said, can you pull down your camera a little bit so we can, we can see your face right now? Just Me? Just, yeah, just pull it down. Right there, right there, right there. All right. All right, there we go. All right, there you go. You straight. All right, no, I was going to say, um, like, self-esteem for me is, like, uh, it's feeling great about yourself no matter how you look, you know, you know, you know based off of, like, you're not really worried about the outside perception because I know some big dudes who will be fresh. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they really, really know how to present themselves. And no matter how they built, they still out looking good. You know what I'm saying? They got, you know what I'm saying? They, they shaved up. They got the beard joint going. They, and it's like, this, this, this is me. Like, like you're going to accept me for who I am. They, you know, and it's not based off of my physical appearance. I think self-esteem is, 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 is uh, you know, like Cat Williams says, it's esteem about your MF itself. It's like, you can't let nobody else determine your self-esteem. You have to, like that has to be within because the thing is like you can't be out here trying to make people happy if you're not happy within yourself so you have to so self-esteem is a is a, is a, is a do-it-yourself project you know what i'm saying it's, it's it's all about how you feel about yourself you know whether it's low or whether it's high but you know you, you i think we all have points where you know we just ain't feeling great about ourselves but you have to get yourself back to that you know you, you got to like coach yourself like you the coach and a quarterback for yourself to make sure that you out here winning most definitely, most definitely. I definitely agree with uh, all the statements been made. I will say, you know, self-esteem, it is about having your own flavor to yourself, having your own style. You know, we're all not, we're, we're, we're not all the same, yeah. of course. But at the same time, how can you be esteemed about yourself if you make, if you just walking around any type of way? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like you have to have that self-care, like we were talking about last week or before, you know, that self-care to make sure that you present the best version of yourself in your own comfortable self you know what mm -hmm. i mean so mm -hmm. i would say self-esteem is really you know being comfortable in who you are and being true to yourself but also making sure that you're keeping yourself together and you know within your own means making sure that you just really real put together and really able to present your best self to everybody you know For sure. and you know as far as body image hey you, you you a bigger brother like me you know make sure you're taking that shower <laughs> Making sure you use some good deodorant. You know, I know we all struggle with that. Make sure, you know, the deodorant yeah. ain't coming from the dollar store. You know what I mean? You know, <laughs> take care of yourself. You know, summertime, yeah. you know, some of us, you know, we got to take two showers a day. That's okay. Right. Make sure you do that. You know, so, you know, I say, you know, making sure that you present the best version of yourself to everybody. So, you know, just piggybacking off of that with the next question. Have you ever really struggled with that? Any of those, you know, be the body image or be self-esteem. Have you ever struggled with that? And how did you overcome that? 
I mean, um, yes. Yeah. yeah. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was gonna, no, I was gonna say, man. Um, so I was in the military for a long time, man. And I like to eat, bro. I'm from the south. Like originally, I'm from Jacksonville, Florida. So I'm I'm southern to the bone, man. I like to eat, and I would always struggle, like like and be barely passing my PT test. And this was a yearly test where you have to run, do push ups, sit ups, and you get your waist measured. And I was on, and like so. So if your waist measure like 39, you fail. Bro, I'd be coming that joint at like 38 and a half, 37, like almost on the cusp of failing my entire PT test, like getting a strike ticking away, stuff like that. So man, I I'm like, I I got I gotta tighten up. So like man, I, I really, really just started like 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 going to the gym, working out hard and you know, figuring out. You know what I'm saying? Then I then I finally got down to like a I got down to like to like a 32. You know what I'm saying? Like I lost all all those inches, man, and I felt great about myself. And even though I was cool with where I was at when I was bigger, but 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 like working on yourself and, and improving yourself do a whole different type of confidence for you. So yeah, man, for a while I was like, I can't get the weight off, but it wasn't that I couldn't get the weight off. I couldn't stop eating. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I had I had to look at myself because I love food. So man, I just had to cut back, you know what I'm saying, for a few months, you know, then a few months turned to a year. Then, you know, and I, I just picked up the lifestyle, but yeah, bro, like it, I, I had a time where I was like, dang, I can't wear certain shirts. I always see that little dad, dad, dad gut poking out. And I was like, nah, I can't do that. But I, I, I can't do that to myself, even though I was healthy, but I wasn't like mentally, it was, it was kind of bothering with me. So I had to go fix myself. So I definitely had some self-esteem issues with my body in that aspect. Um. I would say I had a self-esteem issue regarding like uh, my lifestyle. Um, so within that, um, my mom was a dance professor, as some may know, and I grew up dancing from four to high school. And while doing that, while playing football, like you know, football players like it's like heavily masculine culture, and then yeah. I'm tap dancing and stuff. So I was dealing. I was like, man, I feel soft type of thing of like, but this is who I am. So I wasn't accepting who I was, and and the whole time, people, everybody was supporting me, and they were like, they didn't care, because most people, most people focus on themselves. So what I started to do was like start doing like self reflections of like, man, this is who you are, accept who you are, and just do it. Um, I had I was comparing myself to others regarding like, why can't I just be like, like football, or why can't I just do dance? But it's just like that's not who I am. Um, another thing is like build a support system. You know, my mom is my number one support system in my life, but good friends that are show up at a dance competition or go to a football game and be like, man, we're all about your growth and what you're trying to do. So I had to enjoy this. I had to celebrate the small wins of me being who I am with those two things that created who I am. And after that, I was like, you know, like old people always say, you realize when you're 67 years old, nobody was thinking about you anyway. So just do you. <laughs> so, nice. so just do nice. you. So I had a, um, so I just started doing me and stuff started rolling. So I just had to, to practice my gratitude, man. I think for me, I wouldn't necessarily, I don't think I had too much of a problem with like, self-esteem mainly because i grew up in a household with like bold fashion and just my parents instilling in me and my two sisters like be confident when you walk like that was the motto in the household with everything you did um i think the most part for me was like i'm a, i'm on the short side like i'm like five three five four so it's like having to deal with that being called the kevin hart you know what i mean but it's like how i dealt with that was i just like joked with myself and I feel like if I can joke on myself and be confident in that, there's nothing you can say that I probably haven't said already or joked about. So it's just like, right. what, whatever, for real, for real. Like, me just being funny kind of just helped that in that sense where it's like, I mean, you can, you can joke on me, but it's nothing I haven't heard my parents say, my folks. Like, I grew up in a household where everybody was joking. So it mm -hmm. really, really make a difference to me, for real, for real. So it's like, okay, I'm short. I'm dark skin. All right, what else? What's next? That's it? All right, cool. Like, yeah, that was it for real. That's definitely, that's definitely. Uh, for me, I dealt with being short and dealt with being a bigger guy. So for me, you know, really just, you know, for a period of time, you know, trying to, uh, you know, you know, you trying to wear boots. And it's dang near March, April. You trying to wear boots, trying to look taller. <laughs> you know, but I had to get over. I'm like, you know what? I, I'm gonna get over it. Hey, 
I am who I am as a person. Put the I can't control that. Holes in your shoe to just shine. <laughs> <laughs> like two or three chest holes, couple pairs of socks. <laughs> I, I done tried it all. So, you know, me really just, you know, accepting myself being like, hey, I am who I am at this point. You know, I really can't control that. That's both my parents are short. Jordan know my mom, so you know. <laughs> you know, Miss Miller, Miss small lady. <laughs> yeah. So, but you know, being the bigger guy, you know, I really just had to come to a point where you know, I'm like Shay. I love it. I love to eat. I love to cook. I'm from Mississippi, so two things I can do: I can cook and I can eat. But you know, really just figuring out, you know, okay, yes, you can still eat, but eat in moderation. And yeah. you know, yes, I can still cook, but you know, maybe cooking not so much and so much grease. You know, maybe figuring out, okay, what can I cook? How can I cook certain meats or what can I cut back on really to improve my overall health? So that's really kind of also been really my goal this summer, especially graduating and stuff, is how can I be better physically? But, you know, really just accepting who I am as well. You know, it's nothing wrong with being a big person as long as you're being healthy. And make sure yeah. that you're trying to at least, if, if you want to lose weight, okay, stick consistently with it. If you're okay with being a big person, at least try to be healthy. You know, try to be healthy with, you know, God intended all of us to be different, but, you know, try to be your best self and a healthy version. So that's really what I've been working on recently as well. So, you know, really just, you know, again, having that confidence to say, okay, yes, I may look like this, but I can work on certain things in my life, but also know who I am as a person internally to know that, hey, I'm still good enough. And, you know, that really helped out, you know, with my senior year, you know, going into that really helped with, you know, my peers been saying, you know, hey, we still like you for you, you know, hey, you still the funny person, you still leader that we, you know, we know you to be. So really just like, I, like, like being like like you said you know having that group of people that support you regardless so that will also help so you know i think that's that's some of the main key points that i have sure. so how do you feel societal pressures you know conform people to having a certain expectation of things you know we also we always run into you know the ig models the TikToks, all that stuff so how does society play it play that role Man, if you go on Twitter and you not a uh, six foot, eight foot, two foot, <laughs> nine foot dark skinned man with gorgeous hair and the whitest of teeth, then it, it, that's like snow white. Then it's like you, you not the the typical. Um, but that's just from social media. But it's like if you get outside of that and go touch some grass and meet real people, you'll see that. Those aren't the expectations that a lot of folks have. We get often caught up in social media and what folks are saying, realizing there's more to, than just social media. Like there's a whole outside world aside from the feed that you have. Um, I think it's also important to change your feed as well. Like what you're feeding to yourself, what you're seeing, it's important to change it. Um, but yeah, I, I think that social media is a very big contributor of that. And you can't always look at what's on social media. You got to know you first. Like you have a... What's the word? Uh, an easily moved mind where it's like you can be influenced by a bunch of different things you see. Then, of course, your, your perception about yourself is going to be affected by every little thing you see. But when you stand firm in who you are, nothing no one says, nothing no one sees, it's, it's not, it's not going to affect you anyway. Yeah, I, I agree, man. I think Instagram is crazy because right I, now it's, it's based off yeah, of how beautiful God, you are. You, you either you either cock diesel, you're a personal yeah. trainer, or you yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you you it's like it's it's all based off of the level of your beauty right now on social media. So 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 other stuff don't really get no credit. It's like you could be like nobody cares about the person who I mean people care, but it but you could just have a hundred thousand followers just by looking good. No substance. But, no, you know what I'm saying? No personality. Don't look at it. You can just be fine, bro. You can just be fine, bro. Like, 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 even for me in comedy, like, I have pretty good stand. I've been doing this for twelve years. But being that I'm not like a, a good looking dude, as far as like, as far as like having like a bunch of followers, nobody cares. Like he has, like you have to be something else other than just being funny. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, like, come, like, here's the thing. I'm gonna say I'm a comedian, but I'm not goofy. Like, I'm not like a clown. You know what I'm saying? I have like real actual stand up. So if nobody paying attention to you, you know what I'm saying? If nobody paying attention to you, <laughs> he said, I'm not them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Like, they, not, they, yeah. I actually don't. Hey, and how do your people say I'm not one of them? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm but yeah, man, it's all about it's all about it's all about uh physical appearance right now on social media. And I think that's bad because that's why you got so many young people 
trying to alter their appearance so they can appeal to social media. And I think that's really, really dangerous. Um, I, I would get into like, man, listen to the music we listen to, man. Um, I, I was at, I was outside the White House and Neo was talking. He made a lot of music about make like making love, being lovable. Yeah. And this stuff, man, we don't have stuff like that no more. It's no. about we, <laughs> men degrading women and women over sexualizing oh, themselves. And the we, yeah, and then <laughs> talk about a relationship look, look. podcast. <laughs> How you gonna have a relationship podcast? You're not in a relationship. What are you oh doing? That don't oh make sense, God. bro. So, man, and then. And like we just listen to just so much toxic. Yeah. You know, we go from NBA young boy to all this bull, man. Like yeah. this is not good. Yeah. And then we got the thing with the gender roles and the, the stereotypes. Uh it's just really toxic, man. Um so this is like how do we like work through bullying and discrimination and all this type of stuff while trying to get your self esteem together? Yeah. So um, it's just really like it's just been it's really toxic and what, being negative sales. So like, how do we overcome with sales for putting out good good content out there for us to listen to the world? Yeah, so, I mean, I, I just think you have to you have to you have to be detached from social media sometime, man. Because yeah. like like I know how people say sex sales, and it does. But I think right now more than ever, uh, black trauma and toxicity is selling at a higher rate, like people market trauma. Like you, like a lot of the podcasts are only about, you know, like nobody's talking about stuff like we talking about, you know what nah, I'm saying? Nah. <laughs> and, and, and the thing is like Charleston White, he said, when I talked about real stuff, nobody was listening. Nobody cared, exactly. But when I started, <laughs> when I started <laughs> saying the most about... horrific thing, everybody started watching. Yeah. And he says, the best way to tell the truth is through a joke. Yeah. Yeah. And this. And it's, uh, I, I mean, like, I was talking to my wife. I was like, man, at this point, I know it sounds selfish, and I do volunteer, but you really got to worry about yourself these days because the world is in trouble, dog. You really got to make sure your stuff is good to go, man. Like, you really got to make sure, like, your children and your family is aligned to positivity because if you, if, if you let them get out in the world, it's, it is, it's treacherous, bro. Yeah. And, that, and that messes up their self-esteem because they're not aligning to what the world is doing. And that's traumatic to them. So you have to like help them like get on the right track. Because if not, man, it's, it's, it's going to be rough. Yeah. And I want to talk about, we talk about societal pressures. So the one thing I'm about to bring up, and it can play into somebody's self-esteem because I've seen this so many times with different brothers that I know. Man, I got to work so much because uh, I got to I gotta give my money to this girl that I'm dating. Because she said if I ain't making this much. What I ain't say. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I ain't saying she. But she ain't messing with no. Messing with no bro. You know what I mean, <laughs> brother, save your coin. Don't no, don't spend your coin on her. She ain't worth it. Look, it's a lesson. It's, Here's it's the thing, not, though. Nothing wrong with just from an OG perspective. Out a little it's bit, not bad. It's yeah, not, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with stepping out a little bit now. Just from an OG perspective. Okay. Go ahead. Hey, so what are we calling that? What are we calling the <laughs> sip? Let me, say this, let me say this real quick. Let me say this real quick. It's nothing wrong with spending money on a woman, okay, if she's worth it. But if your first conversation, she's saying, so yeah, my cash up is, or if you look at her bio. <laughs> what are yeah, you doing? it's like, I'm cool, yo. I'm cool. Or, you know, after y'all talk for three or four, you know, three or four messages, she'd be like, yeah, so, uh. You want to buy my lunch today? I'm like, oh, I just met you today. Do you, you know? want to buy mine? As as men, we have to take our power back. That's Listen, and end. maybe and maybe I'm about to start a war with y'all three because y'all are a little younger. But here's what, uh -oh. what I say. Because I go to Bowie. I'm, I'm a full-time student, bro. So so I'm in class with, you know, I'm in class with, like, young, you know what I'm saying? With, the, with a bunch of girls, pretty much. You know, so you, no, you, know, you, know our, you know our classes. It might, be, it might be 25 students, but it might be two dudes in class. That's just HBCU. That's just how it goes. So they be talking about how trash the dudes are on campus and how trash like the dudes are who they go to school with. And and, I, and I'm listening. I'm like, I know back. I hate to be a back in my day time too. But, but here's the thing. <laughs> back when I was going, they went out with it. That was <laughs> I don't know if y'all really know how to court women because y'all grew nah. up in social media age. To where everything is on the internet. Back Facts. in my 
Yeah, we had, if we saw somebody we like, bro, we had to go up to them and talk to them and get them to want to, you know, you know, not convince them to be interested in us, but to figure out right then in person whether she like you or not. And y'all got to learn how to court women, bro. And I think that's the thing with self-esteem because y'all don't have that confidence to go up to a girl that you might be interested in and go say something to her. You might, you, you might see her and you're going to ask her, what's your Instagram? I don't have a whole conversation with her. I have, and, and I just got rejected. So I just decided, <laughs> I would just let him take a shot at me. That's, that's where I'm at. No, no, I resorted to that. Listen, I resorted to that, and I've been great ever since. No complaints. So I was like, easy. Ooh. Man, you just hit but you, you all, you all right. The art of courting a woman the art of courting is a lost woman, art bro. today. It's a lost art. Absolutely. Chivalry. Oh, oh, that, oh this dead, man. That's dead. It's dead. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but I agree with you, man. Like, folks, guys don't know how to be playing no more, man. No, nah, man. This is like, I'd be like, but you, like, that's what you said. Right. Hey, hey, like, most of the time, he will walk up and be like, hey, yo, shorty. Like, yo, shorty with the blue dress. Yeah. Yo, shorty with the blue, shorty with the blue dress. Like, let's go, let's go. I'm not trying to talk to you, bro. I'm actually scared right now. She's, She's afraid. afraid. She's afraid. She's calling nah, campus hey, security as we speak. Like, hey, no. hey, 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 Facts. Same thing, man. Like, you know, like, like you two guys graduated from HBCU, like me, yo, man, MC, we got one now. Bro, it's so many wives walking around there, bro. It's wives on HBCU campuses, dog. Man, get on campus. listen, dude, it's, it's crazy. Like, so, it's like me and another OG, we'd be like, dog, I, I could, I, I probably couldn't whip them. <laughs> I'm glad I'm going to school now. <laughs> <laughs> but there's no way I would have been focused, bro. So y'all, y'all are, uh, an anomaly, bro. Y'all went and graduated, did what y'all was supposed to do. I would have had five baby mamas. For sure. <laughs> five baby mamas. For sure. Five. For it's sure. I, 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 I wouldn't have been focused, bro, because I'm, I'm, I'm such an extrovert. And I don't, bro, I would start a conversation with anybody. Five you know what I'm saying? Baby mama. I'm, I'm up there. I'm like, hey, hey, how you doing? You good? You ain't wearing protection. None of those times. I'm southern too. I mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying? You know. <laughs> He, <laughs> speaking. he just, no, that's crazy, yo. Hypothetically speaking, I'm saying, like, I would have been the street. Like this, like this, I would have been outside. That's all I'm just saying. Outside. He'd have lived outside. He'd have lived in the yard. Oh, something along. Would have had a pillow in the car. Just move in an apartment. Why? The party over for what? It's only three in the morning. I'm telling you. <laughs> hey, hey, you got a final at eight. Man, I don't remember about no final. <laughs> it's all right. This is the final exam <laughs> right here. Her. I'm trying to go to human AP. Hey, I'm, I'm telling you, man. So, you know, but that's the thing with, with that's the thing with self esteem, though. I think your ability to approach people and be confident in approaching people, that's a part of self esteem as well. And also, I mean, I might have to say it. Knowing who you should approach. Like, if you know that this girl is six foot tall and you five five, <laughs> or you know this girl is a whole other person. <laughs> they ain't, ain't no road climbing trees now. Sometimes they might like you. Sometimes, Sometimes the trees they might like you. Tell you. I've had what? experience like that. I was like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Like, it just get weird when you ask her to get something off the top shelf. That's when it get right. weird. It's like, hey, right. get, hey, baby, you get them serious from on top of the freaker or the phone. Oh, like, also knowing, like, the personality, like, if you've seen that person, like, their interactions with other people, and you know that's something you can't relate to, but you going to her trying to speak game based off how she look, but you know that's nothing in your personality type or nothing that you can't, you can't even handle that, you can't control that. Why are you talking to them? Just because they look good. Not, I man. feel like a lot of I feel like a lot of men, a lot of men in college miss potential blessings because they're going after so the, the standards of social media are, are rather than the social the standards of what they need in life and what type of peace they need in life. I feel like that's how a lot of men mess up and a lot of men end up you know going through 
a whole lot of unnecessary hair that they don't have to in a relationship. True. Because yeah. they're only they're only going at the looks. They're not they ain't even looking at the personality. They ain't looking at if she has anything going for herself or anything like that. So I feel like, you know, men have to also look at the, the character of women. If you if you know that ain't your type or that's not your speed, don't don't stop chasing that type of woman and then wondering why you can't find a good woman. Yeah. So I agree. I, I, but I, but I think you'll find that out like within the first introduction whether you can deal with a person or not. Because here's the thing about women: yeah. women know within the first thirty to sixty seconds whether they like you or not when mm-hmm. you approach them. They know. They know. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm good. Uh, is she is she giving you vibes back? Then hey man, run with no matter how she. Looks. But. But I'm talking about that so, brother that keep going after him. Like he can yeah, yeah, like yeah. he'll get rejected by one and then go to the the same type of person, the next person. Then when I'm like, why do I keep getting rejected, brother? <laughs> look at the type of woman that you're going after. But <laughs> also, I'd say to that piece, sometimes that standard, like the goalpost moves, right? Because it can be if a woman finds you really attractive off a rip, sometimes you can just walk up to her and be like, Yo, let me get your number. Like, well, it's something real cheap and corny whereas if another guy did that it wouldn't work but because he just looks good it'll fly yeah yeah you ain't gotta work that hard yeah yeah <laughs> pretty pretty privilege is real it's, it's a very real thing on both sides <laughs> but back in my day <laughs> <laughs> back when i was in shit you had to put his work you you had to like i said you had to court these girls bro you know what i'm saying i, I ain't saying you got to spend a bunch of money but you know i mean because you, 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 you gotta understand, like they got the same yeah. struggles you got. You know what I'm saying? They, hey, they on the meal card too. So I know you ain't expect you to take you to craft your crab. I'm a student just like <laughs> now, you. Now I, gotta, now I gotta hear. Now I gotta hear. What's your best courting story? Now I gotta hear. What's my best, best way you courted? Best courting story? Yeah. Put us on, OG. Man, <laughs> I can just give you something general, dog. Just, just be yourself. Let me get my notepad. Yourself. Just be yourself. All you gotta do, like you, you ain't gotta be nobody else, bro. You just gotta walk out there and be yourself. And here's the thing: if you can make her laugh, you got it. Facts, facts, facts. It's over with. If you can make her laugh within the first three conversations, it's over with. Facts. That's that's always been my. You know what I'm saying? Because that was mine. That was mine too. Yeah. Bro, funny, bro. That was mine too. No, girls like funny dudes more than they like. I say girls like funny dudes more than they like. You know, popular dudes. If you funny, bro, it's 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 over with. I think funny is the top echelon as far as like personality with with guys. Facts. You know what I'm saying? If, if you're funny and I'd say if they can like get things from you intellectually, like you can teach her yeah. something, she said yeah. you're like a genius, yeah. you're very, very smart, funny in that, yeah. yeah, you're good. And I you're and sure. I think I think your first date, if you can, it should be a comedy show. He's not. Nah, he's trying to get us to go. There. That's it. <laughs> I need a promo. Yeah, I need a promo. Yeah, because if she ain't got no sense of humor, bro, it's gonna be tough. Like, 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 like that's my thing. I like what I like. If a, if a girl ain't got no sense of humor, I, I really can't be around her. Bro. I don't care how she looks. If she can't like, if she can't like, you know, like, like let go of her, you know, her, uh, uh you know, if, if she can't get us out of herself and like just let go a little bit and live a little bit, we ain't gonna never have nothing. Bye. Is she always serious and she always, you know what I'm saying? Got, got some stuff going on. That's a red flag. To me. You know oh, what I'm even if she's not always serious, if you just not funny, right? Just, you know how sometimes yeah. you'll meet some like women and you're the funniest one in, in, in the situation, and she might make a joke and you probably laugh, just go, ha ha, you stupid, ha. And it's not a genuine. I can't. You got a genuine. Make me. I can't be the only funny one in the situation. Then I'm gonna get bored. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And and that's and that's all a part of knowing yourself and knowing what you like. It's okay to have a preference. Like, and that's the thing that's going on too. Like, people get mad because people have preferences. You like what you like. You know nice. what I'm saying? That's what's gonna keep you there. Like, you just gotta figure it out, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it is nothing wrong with having standards. It's nothing oh, wrong with having no. purposes. It's not feminine, fellas. It is not feminine to have purposes. You you can have a choice of who you like and what you like. It's okay. Exactly. Absolutely. And, You're a human being. Right. And that brings me to the next question. Do you think there's a connection between masculinity and body image? And masculinity, you know, 
how the societal pressures to be masculine and you know tough and all that affect a man's self-esteem because you know you have some men who are just not that tough guy like some men are going to be more of that affectionate sympathetic type guy so how do you think you know the, what is the connection between masculinity and body image and self-esteem uh i think that the connection between masculinity and body image well like you said we're taught to be a certain way right so to the point of you can't really you can't cry if you fall and get hurt you, you can't cry if you're dealing with something you're expected to just tuck it in get over it but then oftentimes that leads to a nonchalant personality you know you don't like to talk or do anything you're more so introverted and you may bottle those emotions and they come out in the wrong way because the proper channel to express them was utilized. Mm -hmm. um, so whether it's just something of you are a little bit insecure about how you look, but you're told to, to suck it up or to just to work out and there's no like, there's no love, there's no encouragement, right? And that could then affect your mental and then uh, it all goes back to not properly express how you feel about these things. So yeah, that oftentimes will lead to you lashing out or having anger issues, or whatever the case may be, because that those proper feelings aren't being channeled the proper way. Yeah. Um, sometimes the idea of masculinity is very toxic in terms of what men should be, especially as men are supposed to be looked at as leaders. But you know, being a leader is one of the hardest things you could do, having to have all that pressure on you, and sometimes that becomes taxing. Absolutely. Definitely. Um, I, I would say, like, uh, being a former athlete, I feel like fitness and athleticism has a closely associated with masculinity like i feel like it's deemed in our culture specifically black culture the if you're athletic you, the better your physique will be and if you're less athletic you have negative body image i feel like that's pretty toxic for our um our culture and community as well that we have to have to be a certain way to do a certain thing instead of just you know doing you type of thing um yeah <laughs> That's all I'm saying on that one. Yeah, I I, I agree, man. I, I think that um like like even militarily, like like you can tell how some military guys are favored because they in amazing shape. Like they got the shoulders and the chest, and they got the tattoos and, and you automatically assume that they are an amazing troop. And sometimes, you know, it ain't always like that. So you can't always look at how a person built and think that they built correctly mentally. You know what I'm saying? Because sometimes the muscles go to their head. So, so I don't, I don't think that body image directly correlates with masculinity. It's just like you said, it's, it's toxic. You know, it's, it's a perception that just because you look good, that you are that you are a good person, and that's not always the case. Yeah, I was definitely I definitely agree with that. And I feel like you know, you have to have your mental in check in order to your for your physical and everything to be what you want. You know, if your mental is not in line with whatever you got a whole bunch of stuff going on in your head a whole bunch of stuff going on in your life you can't be effective as far as having your self-esteem and as far as being positive all the time so i feel like you know you know masculinity you know sometimes that can play on somebody's mental they feel like oh i'm not i'm not the same as this person i'm not the same as that person mm -hmm. and then they just let themselves go and they don't even try <clears throat> to be yeah. who they, you know the best version of themselves so yeah. i feel like that plays a lot into it and you know that's just my thoughts Listen, bro, it, it, it's so bad these days. Like, like I was watching uh, uh, a fitness Instagram channel and a dude was asking people, he was, he was like, so are you natural? And they was like, no, absolutely not. I'm not natural. Meaning that they are admitting these days that these really crazy jack dudes and, 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 and women, they are admitting to taking steroids so they can look better than the next person. So they ain't even, so they, they ain't even hiding, hiding stuff no more. You know, I was like, they, they really admitting to taking steroids. He was like, are you natural? No, I'm not natural. Absolutely, I take this. I take this. I take this, so I can look like this, and that is so dangerous, bro. Like, like most of the people probably gonna have a heart attack. I hate to say it, because it's it's it's, it's so bad because they want to look so big and so macho because they think that muscle, uh, uh, is the I don't know. I, I guess that's a determining factor in in in, in their masculinity, and it's dangerous. Most definitely, most definitely. And again, for everybody coming in, this is the HBCU Man Cave. We are talking about body image and self-esteem for men. So I feel like, uh, what role does, do you think education and awareness plays in promoting positive 
positive body image and self-esteem for men. And, you know, how can we create a more supportive environment for men? Um, I'd say, well, see, we got a common range, right? right? Cuts, cuts by underscore G. He said, I believe masculinity is a masculinity is acquired through upbringing, not doing. And I think that that's correct, right? Your idea of masculinity is going to be presented by the environment you're in, whether it's your family, whether it's your friends, your loved ones. Your <laughs> idea of, to you, what does it mean to be a man? That's going to come from how you grew up, and then eventually becomes from the education you give for yourself. Because at some point, regardless of where you come from at some point now the responsibility is bared upon you in terms of how you decide you want to act how you decide you want to think like not a little kid anymore you're free to make your own decisions and have your own influence mm -hmm. i think to, to to manage that it's important to have those conversations right have conversations with like-minded folk who don't have such a closed box mindset you know what i mean like how we're able to have, have this conversation here and talk about masculinity talk about these different kinds of things you have to be able to express and get it off your chest and talk about it. Because like I said earlier, if you keep it bottled in, eventually it turns into more so a negative thing. Uh, I would like to go, like, uh, to, to piggyback off that a little bit, too. I would say, like, to address and, like, learn critical thinking skills. Like, everything on the Internet that's being consumed and being presented is causing, causing a lot of her internalizing harmful stereotypes of people. Uh, learning how to critical think. Um, I feel like a lot of our schools and education and parents are not addressing that enough of like, learn how to like think things through instead of reacting to the task at hand. And um, I feel like we got better on that. It, we would learn how to deal with situations better and not see that everything we see on the internet is good for us. So I say yeah. critical thinking. Yeah. Yeah. You have to know how to think for yourself. You have to know how to think for yourself because you can be easily swayed by just the simplest of watching a video and you seeing it trending. One week mm -hmm. you think, one week you think, oh, I'm supposed to be this fit person. Next week <clears> you <throat> think, oh, I need to be a, I need to be a bigger person. Like you have to have a backbone to know who you are and what you want to be. You know, like MC said, you have to get to that maturity point where it's like it's your choice. Mm -hmm. But you have to be self-aware and know what is good for me. What can I handle? what what is going to be good for what the path i want to take for my life you know what what appearance do i want to look like you know how do i want how is this appearance going to affect me you know what i'm saying so how is this going to affect me so i feel like you have to be self-aware and really know yourself first in order to be able to figure out who you want to be yeah i mean i, I so i mean i no i'm sorry i'm sorry go ahead, go ahead. Right, go ahead. You good, you good, you good. no no i was going to say uh you know like even for like you know like younger younger men and you know, you know, guys my age and, and guys older, like we have to improve our environment and be careful who we learn this stuff from and try to like, you know what I'm saying? Like center ourselves around some people with some knowledge who can teach us how to, how to be certain ways. You know what I'm saying? How to be like, hey man, you know, hey, that ain't it. You know what I'm saying? Like, cause I'm telling you, man, like me being an older guy at HBCU, bro, I got like, I got like 15 little brothers right now. You know what I'm saying? Who, who I go to class with, Cause we just took like three or four classes together and then my guys and, and they asked me like like real questions about life you know what i'm saying and i'd be i'd be so happy just to even answer because like bro I, i'm like man I, I mean i went through that you know what i'm saying you know like like we talked about last week like like being there for each other and having access to each other you know what i'm saying like having a having a 40 year old guy you can call who married who got a family he's like hey man you know I was dealing with this and being able to teach them, like we gotta be able to teach our young brothers. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, we gotta really do that for each other, bro. Cause unfortunately, man, man like we losing each other at a home and rate, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So, you know, we just gotta really, really just teach each other how to be better. Yeah. And one of the comments cuts by G, he said to allow a better space for men, he said, unlearn the conditions definition of what defines a man and mm -hmm. adopt the ideology that every man defines their own definition of and representation of a man. Absolutely. And it's very true. I feel like, you know, we have that brother on the show. Hey, <laughs> he's been dropping some. Yeah, that brother been. Oh, he's been dropping weeks, bro. Yeah. Hey, cuz, Baji, we appreciate you. Yeah. Also, everybody Absolutely. in the comments, we appreciate you. We're seeing you. Appreciate it. But I feel like, you know, we do have to create those spaces of where 
it is comfortable for us to come together, talk about our problems, but also talk about these issues that we're having. It's okay to sit down with a person and be like, man, I'm feeling this way about myself. You know, I need some encouragement. Or mm-hmm. I'm feeling, you know, or hey, brother, I want I want to lose some weight. You mm-hmm. know, you have any tips. Mm-hmm. You know, it's okay to get help from other people. And I feel like we have to create those spaces of being able to support each other. But we also have to stop degrading each other as men. You know, as men, we have to come sure. together and stop. Instead of, you know, down the next man, we have to be able to create positivity for each other. Yeah. Let go of some of that pride, right, man, and understand, oh, bro. Mm-hmm. You, can, uh, you ain't gonna make it out here by yourself, man. Like you can try, but it's gonna be tough. You know what <laughs> you ain't gonna get nowhere. It's gonna be. You ain't gonna get nowhere, bro. It's good. It's good to have an OG like like my professors, my OGs. You know what I'm saying? I'm, and I'm 43. You know what I'm saying? So you know I, we can always learn. Like I can learn from you guys. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure y'all can learn from me, but we can learn from each other, bro, because we got to protect our culture as far as being black men in this country, bro, because y- y'all know how tough it is. It's a, you yeah, know what I'm saying? It's the reason, it's the reason so, they so. said iron sharp as iron. Huh? Like, iron, the reason they said iron sharp as iron. That's part Absolutely. Of the most definitely, most definitely, most definitely. So, before we wrap up, is there any, like, last advice that you want to give men on just how to deal with maintaining a positive body image and high self esteem? Like, any just last remarks, any advice, like, you can leave in a advice for somebody today what would you say just stay stay active man you know what i'm saying like stay active like if if you ain't got no no type of app or no or no like even on your phone like we, we like we watch our phone every day look at our phone every day you can download like apps and put it in your pocket and see how active you are for that day you know what i'm saying like that's what i started doing man i was like hey i ain't getting nothing today i need to get up and i'll just go walk my little, little puppy you know what i'm saying i'll walk around the block but you you have to stay active man you can't Get that blood flowing if you just sitting still and you know cut back on the crab legs and the salt and the sugar you know what i'm saying and, and that's hard for me because i'm a florida boy we i don't eat seafood every day right? <laughs> you know what i'm saying <laughs> but i have to but i know i'm, I'm older man i can't be doing that i want to be walking my both my daughters down the aisle i want to look good at graduation in december you know what i'm saying i mean i'm 43 but i know i don't, I don't look 43 you know what i'm saying but so so, so i still want to stay healthy man i want to be around so you gotta, you gotta, you gotta take health as a lifestyle and not just a trend because you want to look good on social media or you want to look good at vacation. You, it has to be a lifestyle. It has to be a total lifestyle change. I, I would like to mention something real simple. Be kind to yourself. Yeah. A lot of us are we're, we're, we're extremely hard on ourselves because of social media, the world. Like, man, they doing well. Why ain't doing that? Uh, your parents hard on you, your mom, dad might talk down on you, brother, sister might talk down on you. But, you know, this little games today is just like, really, you did well. Like, you cooked yourself dinner. You read you read an article. Just like little things we do. And the biggest blessing of life is getting up every day. There's somebody that's not going to get up in the morning. And you, we, get, we got the opportunity to wake up today. So just be kind to yourself. Uh, like, avoid talking down on yourself yourself and being critical of your appearance and how mm. you do certain things and uh, and be nice to somebody else as well absolutely you know give somebody a compliment once a day or help somebody out regarding like your job that needs some assistance on a project or something but if you do that you'll see that it might it's not nothing happens drastically but you'll see over time that wow my, my life the world is getting better so be kind to yourself for sure I want to piggyback off of that. I'd say you you gotta show yourself self love, right? And how you, how do you show love to if you're in a relationship, right? You you spend time with them, you take them on dates, you you actually try to grow and be in tune with them. You gotta do the same thing with yourself because you can't give out love if you don't have any for yourself. So take yourself on dates. I mean, I know women, they have their self, self-care dates and solo dates. There's no reason that, men we can go out to do some things we enjoy. If you don't have anything you really enjoy, try new things, right? But it's all about exploring and knowing yourself because self-love will come from how confident and how much you know of yourself. Once you know that, nobody can ever question what you already know. Absolutely. Um, just to piggyback off that, what MC said, you know, knowing yourself. You know, if you know yourself, nobody else can tell you who you are. Nobody else can change who you are. You will change. Change is always going to happen. 
but, but it's gonna be when you want to if you know if you know yourself change will be when you want to it won't be forced on anybody else's outlook on life it'll be something that you want to change that for whatever reason sure so i feel like you know you need to know yourself and have a backbone and stand firm on that you know stand firm on okay, okay this is who i am this is who i want to be nobody else is going to change that you know nothing, nothing else is going to stop me from being who i am no downfall is going to make me change who i am i'm going to be me regardless so i feel like you know you just have to be able to have that backbone to be who you are be confident in who you are and just make adjustments as you see needed you yeah know? so yep. you know if you know you need to work on this or people saying you know you're getting this criticism and you know it's something that you actually need to work on after you evaluate what people are saying then do that but know who you are and know that it's okay to be different it's okay to be unique so just know who you are and stand on that but before we go is there any upcoming things that you all want the people to know anything that you just want you know that you're doing in life and you want the people to know or support anything you all have going on i'll go um started a new new career path well not a career path a new job uh i'm now helping to train young artists helping them with their stage presence nice. um, cool, man. recording and studio, helping them to navigate the whole process as an artist yeah. Kind of shows. Uh, I'll be dropping it soon, but hosting this show for called Team Chella. Uh, I think that's August 11th. I got another show I'm hosting July 19th. So if you follow me on my Instagram, same thing here at I Am Project MC. You'll see all this stuff. But yeah, man, stay tuned. And then of course, August 5th, run out for cookout. We all y'all there. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we up. What's up? Send that Eddie, bro. Hey, listen, I got you. I got you. Hey, yeah, I got you. Yeah. Um, I would say um, looking to possibly pivot in a new career path. We'll see how it works. So putting the energy out there. So I would like some prayers from, from people out there to show that hopefully my life goes to what God wants me to do and not what I want to do. Sure. And uh, continue the, continuing the good energy in the world. And uh, um, let's just continue to so if the black culture just, just unite, uni means one, you'd be so further ahead. But let's continue to try to do our best on that. Um, but yeah, that's it for me. Uh, uh, nothing really major, man. I, I'm, I'm, I'm on tour with two of my, uh, on this comedy tour with two of my Navy guys. We do a military comedy tour called DD Tour 14. We go all over the country doing stand-up comedy. Um, so yeah, follow me. You know, we might be in a city n near y'all real soon. I, like, we like to market in, in military areas where it's a lot of military people at. But, I mean, my joke's for everybody, man. You know, it's, it's, it's all good, man. I'm just trying to, you know, laughter is is, is medicine to me. So, like, that, that, that's, that's what I do, man. But us three that's in the D.C. area, we need to link up. Us got three, you. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, oh, can we get some food? It, it, we can go to brunch, you know. <laughs> I'm trying to get that seed. I'm trying to get that seed for you were talking about. Let's go. Yeah. I'm with it. <laughs> I, hey, so long as the seafood spot got tenders and fries, I'm there. Oh, but you eat seafood? Nah. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I got you. Say seafood. less. I got you. We got Jerry seafood. They got seafood with tenders and fries. So we go there. We can go there. We can go there. We can go there. Nah. I'm with it. <laughs> I'm with it. So sure. again, um, again, I'm Josh. Uh, Anything that I have really going on, really just starting grass school, man. So really just you know, up, asking man. for prayers, you Absolutely. know, starting at this new environment, starting this new job, you know, yeah. start, you know, just being in a different environment and starting school somewhere else, you know, that's not, you know, an HBCU, you know, just going to adjust to the environment, you know, but I'm, I'm loving it. I'm, you know, I'm loving the experience that I'm having so far here. So, you know, just really asking for prayers with that. And yes, again, I know I saw somebody in the comments ask, will we meet again? We meet the HBCU man cave meets right here every wednesday 8 p.m eastern and next week's topic will be fatherhood and family dynamics so that is what we will be talking about again right here on the hbc man cave brought to you by historically black sets i want to thank all of my brothers for just being on the show everybody in the comments everybody who watched everybody who was just dropping gems in the comments again we thank you we thank you we thank you <laughs> Please! <laughs> Self love. Self love. Hey. Okay. No, no, hey. I go. For sure. But I, I like that hoodie, bro. Listen, I hand painted it myself. Say less. I got you. 
<laughs> hey, we know what it is. Hey, there's some talented brothers in the chat. There's some talented brothers on this call.